the name Victor Okafor, aka Eze Ego, is a strong one within the Nigerian cycles. He was known to be one of the most powerful and richest young men back in the late 90s. Eze Ego, aka Victor Okafor, was an addict lover of cars and houses. He also owned a lot of properties across Nigeria. He is said to have built a home worth over 22 million dollars. He also owned 70 other mansions and houses scattered across the country, including owning the largest fleet of cars, all in the 90s. Eze Ego story is often touted as one of the classic rats to riches stories in Nigeria. His source of wealth and sudden demise at a young age is what remains a mystery. To date, some people hold a strong assertion that Eze Ego was a powerful ritualist. Others argue that he was a drug cartel who made so much cash through his drug dealings. Well, in this video, we bring to you the interesting story of Victor Okafor, aka Eze Ego of Ihiala, and some of the billion naira assets he owned before his sudden demise. But before we begin, if you're new to our channel, you're highly welcome to Laura MA TV and please do well to hit on that subscribe button and do not forget to turn on the notification bell so you can always stay notified and updated whenever we post a new video. We post very interesting content every day and without further ado, let's jump right into our story. Eze Ego was the first son of his parents and a native of Uzo Oka community in Ihiala local government area of Anambra state in the southeastern part of Nigeria. He was born on the 25th day of December 1964 in Ihiala. He had his primary education at Uzo Oka Primary School Ihiala and on completion of his primary education, he proceeded to Abad Boys Secondary School Ihiala but he was forced to drop out in secondary school and eventually took to business. His childhood was a traumatic one at a point. His own father reportedly disowned him when he was nabbed for being a member of a robbery gang that terrorized traders and business owners in the city of Onicha. While some of his fellow gangsters were caught and punished, Eze Ego fled to Umumeni village where his angry father was said to have driven him out. From there, he went to Umoduru, his mother's village. However, things were not rosy for him at Umoduru and in 1989, he decided to move to Lagos where he joined a mentor. What happened years after that remained shrouded in mystery, but the next time the world will be hearing of Eze Ego, he was already a multi-millionaire, one of the cream de la cream of Lagos, Nigeria. In Lagos, Eze Ego set up shopping complex on Allen Avenue called the Eze Ego Shopping Complex with a branch in Abuja and the Eze Ego Plaza on Mutala Muhammad International Airport Road. From this port, he operated and controlled one of the biggest electronic stores in Nigeria. His other companies were Vic Winners International Limited, Eze Ego Nigeria Limited, Eze Ego Holdings Limited, Vites Zinco Limited, and Eze Ego Properties Limited. Eze Ego built houses, villas, mansions all over the country, one of which was all made of glass. His real estate, as of 1999, outside his Ihala village home, was put at about half a billion naira. The expansive mansion that served as his country home in Ihala was worth another 500 million naira, with the marble used for the walls all imported from Italy. As at the time of as at the time Eze Ego was alive, he had one of the largest private car garages in Africa. He loved cars and was always purchasing the latest ones, stocking his garage in Ihiala and Lagos respectively. A car freak of the first class, his garage alone was valued at almost 1 billion naira. He once dropped 14 million naira to acquire just two Porsche cars in 1999. A sedan Lincoln Continental Mark 8 and a Mercedes Benz Aru 230 convertible from Montrance author owned by Nigerian billionaire Tayo Ayeni. Actually, as at the time of his death, 
he left behind countless state-of-art cars, 70 houses all over Nigeria and overseas, and over 10 billion naira in his bank account. He was married to the fair complexion and beautiful Lorita in Kechi, a princess from Akata in Imo state, and the marriage produced eight children. Following the death of her husband, Princess Inkechi relocated from Ajao Estate, where she had stayed with her husband, to Leki. As of December 2013, it was reported by Nigerian business guard that she was taking her husband's business empire to a greater height with her children in top universities around the globe. By the way, Eze Ego Fosson was from a Japanese woman. He also fathered kids with other women apart from his wife, Princess Inkechi. On the 25th of December 1999, death came knocking on Ezego's door, but he was not even aware in the slightest. Ezego's birthday was on the 25th of December, and it was his usual tradition to storm Ihiala, his hometown, every Christmas for the double celebration of his birthday, Christmas, and the New Year. His kinsmen and women in Ihiala eagerly awaited his annual homecoming, which meant a lot of goodies for everyone. And so it was that fateful December of 1999, Eze Ego and everyone in his family were in high spirits and plans were fully made for the trip back home. Eze Ego was in the habit of storming the sleepy rustic hometown of Ihiala, impressing his people with his legendary wealth and affluence. Thus, the 1999 edition was no different. Some of the most sought-after musicians in the world's most populous black nation were built to entertain the guests at the most exciting gala of the year. Afrobeat Mestru, Femi Kuti and his positive first band were built to dazzle the guests and rock the community to its fullest. To show how Eze Ego took the party, the money bag personally visited African Shrine to meet Femi Kuti in order to ensure that all went on smoothly. The party was built to start from the night of Christmas to Boxing Day. So, Eze Ego decided to start his trip from Lagos on the 23rd of December, but little did he know that all his efforts were in vain. He was unconsciously planning for his own funeral. On the 23rd of December, Eze Ego left Lagos as planned, heading towards the southeastern region of Nigeria. He took off in the most flashy style, in a convoy of six of his finest automobiles. This included a Lincoln Navigator 1999 model, a limousine, blue Porsche, Lexus Jeep, a Cherokee Jeep, and a latest Honda. The interesting part about that fateful trip was that Eze Ego would normally fly to either Enugu or Port Harcourt, where he would then be driven in a convoy to Ihiala. However, the fatal rate of air crashes during that period claimed to have made him change his mind. The outcome was disastrous for the business mogul. For some unknown reasons, Eze Ego decided to get behind his Lexus Jeep in the convoy and drive himself all the way from Lagos to Ihiala. But somewhere along the Lagos Ibadan Expressway, the first troubled rear its nasty head. Trouble started when the Cherokee Jeep engine became faulty, but Eze Ego was in a hurry and could not even entertain the idea of missing his schedule and arriving on time. So he decided to keep managing the Jeep for as long as possible. But by the time the Jeep got to Asaba in Delta State, the car broke down completely. Now, things were not getting funny anymore. Eze Ego was obviously in distress. His people were waiting for him back home so the carnival could start. But here was his car that he shelled at millions of naira for, giving him the worst head arch of his life at a most unexpected moment. Eze Ego did not want to leave his cherished automobile in the middle of nowhere in Asaba at the mercy of robbers, not the car he bought with so much money. So, so he beckoned at one of his boys to purchase a chain so the jeep would be towed down to Ihiala. The lad returned with the chain, which was then attached to the faulty jeep. However, 
that was the beginning of his problem because Eze Ego was said to have insisted of towing the broken down vehicle all by himself with him driving the Lexus pulling the Choreke. So he was in front while another of his boy was behind the waist of the Choreke. Well, no one was in the position to argue with the boss so they continued their trip until that fateful moment when they reached a spot between Ozabulu and Okija on the Onicha Oweri Express Road. At that point, they were just two kilometers away from Ihala in Anambra State, Ezego's hometown and their final destination. And that was where Death decided to unveil his dreadful figure. Ezego reportedly ran into a damaged portion of the road while he was going down a steep slope and all of a sudden, he stepped on the brakes. The driver of the Cherokee behind him was caught unaware and as he was not even prepared for the sudden storm, he suddenly rammed the Cherokee into Ezego's shiny Lexus, sending the millionaire tumbling down a deep ditch by the roadside. It must however be noted that there are some other slightly different accounts of precisely how the accident happened. Other reports state that it was actually the throwing chain between the two jeeps that snapped, thus forcing the Cherokee at the rear to ram into Ezego's Lexus, making him lost control and plunging into that horrible ditch. Immediately this happened, his convoy, his convoy was thrown into a pandemonium. Those in his convoy made frantic and desperate effort to get him out of the ditch and get him the most effective medical attention promptly. By the time they finally succeeded in getting Ezego out of the ditch, he had sustained a deep gash and his face was massively puffed up, thus disfiguring his handsome face. He was rushed to the nearby Lady of Lords Hospital, where Ezego incidentally made a donation of 50 million naira a few years before the accident. He was still alive and stable when they brought him to the hospital and all the medical workers went into an overdrive to save the life of a man they know as a mentor and a generous giver. However, things got worse and to make matters even more frightening, there was no doctor on duty. By the time a medical doctor eventually showed up, Ezego was already bleeding through his mouth. He was having internal bleeding, already in shock. All attempts to stabilize him failed. At that point, his family members suggested that he be quickly moved to a better equipped hospital in Portacourt. At this point, he still becomes hazy as it is not known whether he finally died while he was on his way to Portacourt or while he was being prepared for a flight to Lagos from Portacourt. Eze Ego died on the 26th day of December 1999, which was a boxing day. He was only 34 years old when he died. And here is the video of the house Eze Ego left behind. The house is presently in a shabby condition. You can see grasses everywhere. And this house was worth well over 500 million naira back in 1999. May his soul continue to rest in peace. Amen.